I was talking, uh, you know, a couple of days ago with some people and we were sort of generally just chatting about, uh, you know, what constitutes mathematical thinking. And, and, and might it be the case that uh, elements of mathematical thinking uh, have actually broader applicability um, and, and is not just applicable uh, to people who are working in uh, and with mathematics. Uh, and the answer turns out to be uh, yes, we believe so. We, we do, I mean, you know, we, we do think that uh, elements of mathematical thinking can be more broadly applicable. Uh, so if you're thinking of, you know, if, if, you, if you try and collect, uh, you know, some ideas uh, around what constitutes mathematical thinking, then one of the things that uh, one would start with uh, is actually communication. Um, and that proves to be an extremely important part of the mathematical thinking process because you can use that uh, not just to clarify your own mind, you know, when you talk to people about your problem and most problems are complex. So as you talk about your problem um, to, to, to other people, it actually helps to clarify your own mind uh, about the problem. And the other thing is that when you're talking to somebody else, when you're sort of communicating your problem to somebody else, uh, you're actually effectively uh, putting out an invitation uh, for them to actually think about your problem and to perhaps come up with some ideas uh, about how to structure the problem or how to make progress on the problem or, or how to even understand the problem uh, better. Understanding a problem well um, is, is actually not a trivial thing to do. Uh, you know, you really want to get to the point where you un understand the correct problem because you don't want to be in a position where you get uh, let's say the, the right answer to the wrong question. You eventually want to get to uh, the right answer to the right question. So understanding the problem um, and, and doing that in a manner that you can understand the problem from a multiplicity of different viewpoints uh, is important. So that you might want to use analogies, for example. You want, might want to say that this problem looks a lot like uh, something else. And that process of using analogies, that process of actually trying to uh, grapple with this underlying complex hard problem from a multiplicity of viewpoints, uh, you know, gives a, gives a sort of nice overall view on, on, on that particular problem. And that is again a skill set which is worth having, you know, looking at a complex problem and having the ability to, to sort of look at it from multiplicity of viewpoints. Uh, and every time you look at it from a different viewpoint, you might see a slightly different perspective uh, to what is essentially the same problem. Getting to the uh, essence of the problem, you know, the, the, the real core of the problem is again another sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to call it just a pure art, but it, it is something that takes time. Um, you know, where you start with, as I said, you know, you're probably starting with some sort of big complex problem. And of course, all problems remain complex until you understand them. Uh, but when you're starting it off with a problem, it will, it will be big and big and complex and daunting. Uh, but you know, learning, as you learn more about the problem, you know, learning to sort of get to the essence of the problem, see what kind of really matters. Uh, and you know, having the ability to focus on the essence of the problem while stripping away the details uh, is again something which is, uh, you know, very much part of the mathematical thinking process where you say, look, this is what really, really matters. Right? And all you know, you hear a bunch of other things which, which kind of matter, which sort of matter, but this is the essence and this is the heart of the problem. Another critical part is going from complexity to simplicity. So take this larger problem, decompose it in its various dis in the, into its various constituent parts, identify what kind of really matters, and then just kind of you know, break it up into different components. And as soon as you go from a larger problem uh, which seems complex, which seems complicated, which seems intractable, uh, onto a set of problems where you have identified, uh, you know, broken it up into, in a sense, into different components, uh, immediately makes one feel that one can actually make some progress. Because otherwise it just, the problem seems, uh, you know, often, uh, uh, horribly daunting. It's like, where on earth do I even start? Uh, but once you've gone through that process of complexity to simplicity, uh, then, you know, you, you feel much more comfortable that you can actually go ahead and make progress. And we've now, let's say, got to a point where we can make progress, right? Uh, where do we start? 
Um, and, and one of the things that uh, is often there in the sort of scientific process in particular in sort of uh, trying to solve problems mathematically uh, is that you just a lot of the time just start with the problem that you can solve rather than with the problem that ought to be solved, right? Let's just start making progress. So just, you know, rather than say, look, I really need to solve this problem, um, and, but it's, it's going to be hard, uh, but there's another sub-problem which is easier to tackle, uh, easier to address. Uh, then, you know, the simplest strategy is just to start with the problem that you can solve uh, rather than the problem that perhaps eventually ought to be solved. So what one has uh, attempted to do is to actually give uh, some sense of uh, let's say the skill sets uh, which would be needed uh, within the mathematical thinking process which uh, you know we've sort of tried to communicate it in a manner without uh, you know any mathematical construct at all. Um, so you know the idea is to say that look these are elements of or some elements, uh, this is not exhaustive, uh, these are some elements of the mathematical thinking process. Um, and and these, these kind of skill sets are you know much more and broadly applicable. In fact, one of the places that one finds uh, these skill sets particularly uh, useful is in the field of technology. So if you're trying to find uh, a solution, a technology solution uh, to a, a domain specific problem, then today what happens is that uh, a lot of these technology solutions will come uh, with the expectation that perhaps um, you know, ideas from machine learning and artificial intelligence can actually go ahead and solve uh, some of them. So the domain itself, the area where you're trying to solve a problem often turns out to be a sort of complex system. Uh, so there when you apply the mathematical thinking process of communicating the problem, decomposing the problem, uh, understanding the problem, so on and so forth, turns out to be an extremely uh, important and a useful skill set. But in that process, you will probably use technology somewhere. It, to solve that domain specific problem, you'll use technology somewhere. And the expectation today, uh, a large expectation today, is that you'll be employing some elements or some ideas from uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, which itself actually has a, you know, a reasonably sophisticated mathematical structure to it. Uh, so it's interesting that when you're trying to solve domain specific problems, you, you will probably need some elements of the mathematical thinking process. And within that, if you're using technology and in particular using machine learning and AI, again, you're probably using a mathematical construct. So the mathematical thinking process should again, ideally help you. So hopefully this uh, video gave um, a little bit of a sense of the usefulness, the utility, uh, and perhaps even the importance of uh, the mathematical thinking process uh, and its potential applicability uh, across domains. So what we'll do is we, we'll keep this thread going. Uh, we, we'll, we'll post some more content on uh, fleshing out uh, you know, other elements of the mathematical thinking process and also perhaps uh, aim to, to, to highlight their applicability uh, to uh, a particular uh, domain. So for example, perhaps to the, to, to the domain of technology. Uh, and, and in particular to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, but notwithstanding technology or machine learning and artificial intelligence, I mean, we do believe that this, I mean, some of the, the thoughts that are shared uh, may find uh, broader applicability and usefulness uh, in other domains as well.